Hello, everybody, and welcome to Spiritual Bite number 306, dated September 9th, 2021. I'm Walter, your mobile historian and blue-collar scholar. Thank you so much for tuning in. This Spiritual Bite is entitled Solomonic Wisdom. Before I begin, though, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Juarez Lee Shelton, M.A. In addition to that, please also click on the little notification bell immediately to the right of the subscribe button. In doing so, you will receive notifications when I post new, exciting, and enlightening videos in history, law, political science, theology, and philosophy. Thank you so much in advance. Again, this spiritual bite is entitled Solomonic Wisdom. Now, almost everyone alive <clears throat> has at least heard of King Solomon, one of the great kings of the Holy Bible. Solomon, son of David, grandson of Jesse, said to be one of the wisest men who ever lived. Solomon is best remembered for his knowledge and wisdom, all, of course, given directly by our Heavenly Father. And he is also, of course, remembered for building the great temple. But we don't focus here on the temple, but, of course, on his wisdom. Now, Solomon's wisdom indeed is what he is best known for, like I said, and he is so greatly revered for that, that he is adored in Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, okay? And the specific uh, story of how this all came about can be found in the book of First Kings, chapter 3, verses 1 through 28. Of course, the story of Solomon extends well beyond that point. Uh, I invite you to read it, uh, you know, extensively within the book of First Kings. But for the purposes of this video, we focus on his wisdom and how it was most uh, profoundly displayed. Uh, with the very well-known story of the baby that he ordered to be split in two if the two women in dispute over the baby's ownership could not reach an agreement. So, again, the book of 1 Kings, chapter 3, verses 1 through 28. Read along with me, if you will. It says, And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter, and brought her into the city of David, until he had made an end of building his own house, and the house of the Lord, and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Only the people sacrificed in high places, because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord walking in the statutes of David, his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth, and in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king, instead of David, my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, 
which thou hast chosen a great people, that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked for riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall be so, so that there shall not be among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. Then came two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And the one woman said, O oh, my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house and I was delivered of a child with her in this house. And it came to pass that the third day after I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also, and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in that house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spoke before the king. Then the king said, The one saith, This is my son that liveth, and thy son is the dead. And the other saith, Nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one, and the other half to the other. Then spoke the woman who the living child was, all right, unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, O Lord, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it, in no way slay it. But the other said, let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Then the king answered and said, give her the living child, and in no way slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. So we see that Solomon was faced with a most, you know, undesirable 
task in deciding who the baby really belonged to. Uh, but with the wisdom that Father God gave him, you know, he nipped this in the bud real quick and said, fine, since you two can't seem to come to a consensus, I'll cut the baby in half and give each of you a half. And obviously, the baby's real mother, all right, immediately, rather than see her child slaughtered, offered to forfeit her child so that the child could live, even if it was not with her. And then, of course, we see the false mother fully go along with the idea of cutting the baby in two because it's not hers anyway, so she really doesn't care all that much. She's just trying to be spiteful. So that test alone proved to King Solomon who the real mother was. The real mother, no matter what she had to do, would never want to see her baby slaughtered. Okay, even if it meant losing it to someone else. So that wisdom so profound that it obviously, the test was so perfect that it obviously, all right, made the real mother speak out and be more than willing to simply give up the baby to the other woman who wasn't its mother, all right, rather than see the baby slaughtered needlessly, okay? And this action, all right, is arguably the one from which we derive the term Solomonic wisdom, all right, or Solomonic thinking, all right. Quite often, Solomonic thinking and wisdom can be, you know, very cutthroat, but it gets the job done. And essentially, you know, you are willing to split something down the middle. All right. In order to appease both sides. And you'll often see that one side, rather than have that happen and have whatever we're talking about divided, what one side will probably often just give it up altogether. The one that it means the most to will give it up altogether rather than have whatever it is split. All right. Being able to bring about some sort of consensus and balance here. All right is the art of Solomonic wisdom, all right? And Solomon knew exactly how to resolve this dispute, all right? How to really get the truth out, all right? And ultimately, though, you know, dividing things is typically not going to please either side, all right? But... What it can do is lead to peaceful discussion and negotiations, maybe for the two sides ultimately to learn to work together. All right. So it has several different ways in which it can play out ultimately for a greater good. But Solomonic wisdom is designed essentially to bring about that great good. All right. And of course, that wisdom is directly inspired from God. It was given to Solomon by God, and he used it wisely uh, as evidenced by this. And of course, in the continuing story of Solomon in his life, we know that you know he remained in God's good graces for many, many years, but he was a mortal, and he did sin, and he did indeed, uh, with time, slowly move away from his close relationship with God and, you know, broke statutes and requirements, uh, taking on multiple wives and concubines and no longer giving God the due praise and worship that he always is entitled to. And of course, you know, Solomon's misdeeds resulted in a lot of unfortunate, uh, you know, results for Israel. Uh, in the years to follow. Uh, but that is how things worked. But for a substantial amount of time, you know, Solomon did indeed um, adhere to and give God his due praise. And God blessed him tremendously, not only with wisdom, but with great riches and honor, all right, as evidenced by scripture. Okay. Um, like I said, 
you want to understand more about King Solomon, uh, read the book of First Kings, okay, in the Bible, and you will definitely gain more insight on this very, very wise, you know, and very insightful uh, king in the ancient world, okay? So, that is our video on Solomonic wisdom and how it has been used and how it uh, is designed to bring about a result and how it is designed to bring about a fair and just result, a result for a greater good, hopefully, anyway, in the long run. So I thank you so much for listening to this video. All right. Again, we read from the first book of Kings, uh, chapter three, verses one through twenty eight. If you have any questions or controversies, you can leave them down below and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, if you have not subscribed to my channel, uh, please do so now. It would be greatly appreciated. And if you like this video, enjoy it, learned a thing or two about King Solomon from the video, like the video. It means more than you know with respect to building one's YouTube presence and following. All right. So thanks again for listening. Like I said, take care, stay safe out there. And I'll talk to you at the next video. Peace.